the High Grace family. I thought I'd show this to you. I'm going to walk up here. This is a, the Christmas card from our friend Dave Coe. And I just loved it, how he just stamped cancel over everything he had hoped to do this year. But he wrote the card in very good spirits. And this has been a year for a lot of changes, a lot of cancellations, a lot of things we hoped to do we couldn't do. But a lot of great stuff has still gone on. And as we come to Christmas, I just want you to know about all the wonderful opportunities we have and all the work that is going on behind the scenes. We're not here worshiping inside any, right now, and it's easy to think, well, there's not a whole lot going on at church, but there is so much work, so much creativity, so much ingenuity, so much prayer. Uh, it's amazing. And the service you're going to see today, our Congregational Christmas Program, is maybe the best example of that all year. Normally, our Sunday School Christmas program is one of the biggest services we have all year with the church packed with all the parents and family and the kids. We can't do that this year, but the service you're about to see and in which you're going to participate has over, I think Katie told me, 21 families are doing reading parts. And with everything else, we have over 40 Grace families participating in this special service. And it took a lot of hard work and creativity to put it together. And we pray it will be a blessing for you. Christmas in the Barn is coming up on Christmas Eve. And as I'm making this little presentation on Sunday the 13th to you, and as of now, there are about 45 spots remaining at the 1.30 service. We encourage you, if you'd like to participate in the Christmas in a Barn Christmas Eve services, you need to register by Monday, December 21st, which would be tomorrow, if you're watching this, on the 20th. But we think that will be a wonderful opportunity, a time for us to worship together safely. And we look forward to this. And then on Christmas Day at 10 o'clock, something totally new for this technologically challenged pastor, we're doing a Zoom Christmas morning service. Christmas morning's normally a small service, but we thought we'd try something different with a lot of participation. So we're inviting you to join via Zoom. You'll be able to, to participate in the service, to share in the service. We have a couple of times in the service when we're asking people to share, including inviting children to share one of their Christmas gifts with the rest of us as well, and you'll get more information on that. So on this strangest of all Christmases in our lives, may God bless us, and may we, even though we're doing it differently, may we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a wonderful season. So God's blessings to you, and let's have a wonderful service today, and a great and merry Christmas. Good morning, Grace friends. Thank you for joining us for our Grace Congregation-wide Christmas program this morning. Certainly, I wish we could have had our um, cantata and our youth education Christmas program, but this has been an incredible blessing to put this program together. We have students as young as three and individuals as old as 83 that have participated. We have some beautiful music that we'll be sharing with you, and of course, the wonderful story of Jesus' birth. So I hope you enjoy this unique Christmas program as much as we all have putting it together. In addition, I wanted to share a few pictures with you. These are photos from our Christmas party give back on last Sunday, December 13th. And it was so wonderful to see so many of your faces. You brought so many donations. It was absolutely incredible and heartwarming. We collected boxes and boxes of items for Lasada, and they were so appreciative for all of those donations. We also had group a group of singers that went out and caroled to a few local shut-ins, and they were so appreciative for the music that was brought to their homes. We also had some individuals decorate our grace grounds, and it looks beautiful, so thank you for that. And in addition, you dropped off an immense amount of donations to fill our 40 Christmas meal bags for All People's Church. Um, oh, some of these photos that you're looking at right now, the, we had piles and piles of food that we sorted into bags for them, and it was just amazing to see. You also donated over $3,200, which was incredible, and we used that money to purchase the 40 turkeys that go along with the meal bags, along with the other items that we were missing and needed to fill in. The remaining money will be given to All People's Food Pantry so they can use it to purchase other Christmas meals or items that they might need. And on Monday morning, December 14th, we had a caravan of cars that went down. It took five vehicles and two more went to pick up the 40 turkeys and we met at All People's. And again, they were so grateful for all these donations. 
So thank you again for all you did last week. And I hope that you enjoy our Grace Congregation Wide Christmas program this week. Merry Christmas. Hi everyone. Happy fourth week of Advent. We are so glad that this week we get to light all four candles on the Advent wreath. And to help lead us in that today, the Newell family is here. God of love, you so love the world that you gave your only Son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Come among us and fill our hearts with your love. Cause our lives to reflect your love to the world. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Today we light a candle for love. As we wait for the one who establishes the throne of David forever, the true ruler of the world, we remember the love of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus. As the fourth, the fourth candle on the Advent wreath symbolizes love. Love is necessary for us to survive. Love is an essential part of who we are as human beings and as children of God. Jesus shows us the ultimate expression of love in his death on the cross. Jesus was innocent and could have proven his innocence, preventing his own death. Instead, he chose to die, knowing that in doing so, he was taking on the sins of the world. This love shows us how we are to care for ourselves and our neighbors who are also made in the image of God. This week, please center your devotional life around love using the following suggestions. Send a card or make a phone call to someone you love. Tell them what you love about them. Find an object in your house that represents love or someone you love. Hold it in your hands and reflect on how the love this object represents has impacted your life. Read Luke 23. How did Jesus' death amplify love? What is the ministry that you love, that you are passionate about? passionate about? If you can't think of one, what is a cause that you would love to see the church get involved with? Spend some time dreaming and praying about how God is using your love and passion to invite you to serve your neighbors. Spend time giving thanks to God for his love and ask for help in showing his love to others. Let us pray. God of love and mercy, Let us pray. God of love and mercy, embrace your people wherever they are. Pour out your love into our hearts, that we might be living signs of your love in the midst of a world consumed by hatred and rage. Strengthen us against the temptation of taking sides and speaking ill of your children. Instead, remind us to always speak the truth in love so that people may know that we speak your word. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. May the hope of the star the peace of the shepherds, the joy of the angels, and the love of the Holy Family guide you to Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our Advent hymn, He Came Down. This week we will sing, He Came Down That We Might Have Love. Let us pray. In this special service, we remember how the birth of Jesus brought light into a dark world. With our world looking so different this year, we pray that you would inspire us as we welcome your son anew. Help us to hear his message at Christmas and always, and to share his word with others around us. Amen. Our Lord needed a savior. People strayed away from God and couldn't follow his law, but God still loved us and promised to save us. A reading from John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Over 2,000 years ago, 
In a city called Nazareth, there lived a young woman named Mary. Mary was promised to marry a man named Joseph, who lived there too. One day, an angel from God came and talked to Mary. A reading from Luke. The angel said to Mary, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Having a baby can be overwhelming for anyone, but Mary was carrying God's son. Talk about a big job! To make things even more difficult, when it came close to when the baby would be born, Mary and Joseph couldn't stay in their hometown. A reading from Luke. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph's family came from Bethlehem. So together, Mary and Joseph traveled the 90 miles by foot and donkey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. That's like walking from Grace and Grafton to Lambeau Field in Green Bay. Bethlehem was a busy place the night that they arrived. There was no room in any of the hotels in town. Mary and Joseph might have been pretty scared with Mary pregnant and nowhere to stay. But they trusted that God had a plan for them and God's plans are always perfect. So they found a stable where they could sleep and they stayed there with the animals. And, and at just the right time, in God's, God's chosen place, a baby was born! A reading from Luke. She gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Christ the Savior was born!
my Savior was born. What amazing news! Wonderful news! Life-changing news! Everything-changing news! So if it were you, whom would you choose to spread this good news? Maybe someone famous. Someone rich? Someone important. Someone with a lot of Facebook friends. Not God. He chose shepherds. God chose poor, ordinary people. The simple people watching their sheep in a field outside of Bethlehem. A reading from Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. So shepherds must have been a bit surprised. I mean, angels singing? God's son lying in a manger? Crazy stuff. But those shepherds trusted God and followed the angel's directions. A reading from Luke. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. tells us all the people who heard the news from the shepherds were amazed. God's promise to save us was fulfilled at last.
but my birthday celebrations only last about an hour long. But Jesus' birth was a very, very special one. So the celebrations lasted days, weeks, and even months. When the Savior was born, a star appeared in the sky. Far away from Bethlehem, in the east, some wise men saw this star. They studied this kind of stuff, so they knew what it meant. Christ the Savior was born! They followed the star all the way to Bethlehem. It was a long journey, and it probably took a really long time. And I mean a really long time, way longer than this church service. Then the star stopped over one house. A reading from Matthew in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people. He inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. What a sight that must have been! And the celebration isn't over yet. God loved us so much that he promised to send us a savior. And he kept that promise by sending Jesus. It was a humble birth, a stable, a manger, shepherds, but wow! Think of the angels singing. Think of the new star shining. Those wise men starting to pack. Because this birth was definitely worth the road trip. God gives us the same joy this Christmas. Christ the Savior is born. Let's, Let's share the good news.
God's good news. Amen. Hello, Grace members. This is a year for doing many things differently, for better or worse, in just about every aspect of life. This kind of sustained upheaval is difficult, but as the Bible says, perhaps we were born for such a time as this. Perhaps we have been equipped in faith to rise to the challenges of these times with all the grace, patience, and prayers we can bring. God has given us a solid foundation in Christ to stand on. And while the way we are worshiping has changed, the center and the reason for our worshiping has not. It will be difficult not to be in our normal space for Christmas this year, but the worship planning team and the leadership of the church has had many conversations about what to do, and we are glad to be able to offer this very unique worship opportunity in Tom and Jean Fugate's barn. We know this will not be for everyone, so we will have an option for online worship that our praise team is going to be leading, and the services in the barn will also be live streamed for you to watch at home. The advantage of being in the barn versus being in the church is the barn has very high ceilings and it has good ventilation. Thank you very much to Tom and Jean Fugate for being willing to host us in this special service. Doing Christmas in the barn is actually something I've dreamed of for many years, and I'm excited to have the chance to worship Christ in a setting much more like the place he was born. Just like Mary and Joseph weren't able to be inside the inn to give birth to Christ, we will not be inside our church home. But maybe this will make up our worship even more meaningful. If we can bundle up to go to Packer games, to go hunting or ice fishing, we can certainly bundle up and worship our Lord in a place that will be much safer this Christmas. I'll take you through some of the things that we can expect in this video. First of all, it will obviously be cold, most likely, but we are going to have heaters in the barn to help raise the temps. We will open the barn doors so there will be ventilation and cross ventilation. There's three sets of large doors in the barn. So it's hard to know exactly what the temperature will be. We encourage you to dress in layers, um, bring your own blankets, whatever you need to stay warm. And we will be providing those little hand warming packs for you if you would like them. Safety is of course our of utmost importance to us right now. And so you will need to wear a mask and practice social distancing because we would hate for anything to happen to anybody in our church. We don't want anybody to get sick because of this service. There will be a sign up for the services so that we make sure we have um, enough room for social distancing and we know what to expect. Um, Signups will be online with Sign Up Genius and you'll have a link for that with this video email. And um, the closing time for that will be December 21st so that we can get everything set up in the days in between. There will be a service at 3 p.m. and a service at 5 p.m. And we are limiting um, attendance to 100 people for each service. That's how many we think we can safely fit in the barn with social distancing. You will also need to wear your masks um, the whole time. 
There will be parking available at um, the barn. It will be in the field behind the barn, as you can see in these pictures. The field will be lit up so that you'll be able to see in the dark and there are going to be people there who will help direct you. If the forecast calls for snow, we have a plan B in place and we will communicate that with you the week of Christmas Eve. We will share specific information on parking with you soon that will show you exactly how it will go. And we also will have bathroom options for you there. We do need volunteers to help make this service happen. The parking people that I just mentioned are some of the volunteers we need. And um, we we'll also have jobs you could do at home, like putting batteries in the electric candles we're going to be using, helping set up chairs, things like that. And there's also a sign up genius link in this email uh, for those jobs as well. We need your help to make this happen. For accessibility concerns, there is a hill that leads up to the barn. You can see in this picture, uh, but you are welcome to drive your car up the hill if you have a family member who would have a hard time walking up it. You can drop them off and then go and park your car and we will have people stationed there as well to make sure that the way is clear and safe for you to do that. We will have all the chairs spaced out uh, so that people aren't sitting close together. If you need to move a chair here or there to get the correct amount for your family, you can do that, but we just ask that you make sure there's six feet between your family and anybody else. The service will be short, no more than 30 minutes, uh, again, for the safety concerns. We will have a couple songs that we will be able to sing and you are welcome to just listen if you prefer or sing along, but if you do sing, you need to keep your mask on. We are collecting donations uh, in honor of Jesus and thanking him for all that he gave to us. We are going to give a few food items to help people in our community who are hungry this uh, winter. And those donations are going to go to Family Promise in Grafton. Dan Hagerman made a manger for us, and we should be thankful we don't have to bring gold, frankincense, or myrrh. But we are looking for donations of grape or strawberry jelly, rice or pasta side dishes, macaroni and cheese, spaghetti noodles, egg noodles, and canned veggies, soup, or fruit. There's going to be a little area just outside the worship center doors for a family photo opportunity if you want to take a picture um, there and remember this unique one year of your life, uh, you can do that. As I mentioned earlier, we are going to be using flameless candles for safety in the barn and so if you will have one when you come in, you'll be able to pick one up and then you'll return them at the end of the service and we'll disinfect them for use for the next service. I know that's a lot of information. Um, this will also be in written form in a letter and grace notes so that you can refer back to it. And we hope that however you worship, whether it's in the barn or watching, watching from home, that you give God praise and you truly hear the good news that Christ is born for you.